Good morning, church. Today's scripture reading is found in Isaiah 58, 13 and 14. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Don't pursue your own interest on that day, but enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with delight as the Lord's holy day. Honor the Sabbath and everything you do on that day. And don't, then the Lord will be your delight. I will give you a great honor and satisfy you with the inheritance I promised to your ancestor, Jacob. I, the Lord, have spoken. May the Lord bless the scripture. Good morning. Before I go into tonight's, uh, today's message, I just wanted to make two comments. The first one is, God answers prayers, doesn't he? Amen. Doesn't he answer prayers? You know, uh, Earl mentioned that, you know, we pray over these things in the blue cards throughout the week because that's what God does. Well, last week we, uh, we had an anointing here, and uh, Dave Town, who's here, you know, had a, a cancer scare. We prayed over him, we anointed him, and today he has good news. God has taken care of it because that's the thing, that, that's the kind of thing that God does. Amen? God deserves a round of applause. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Now, the second thing is, uh, those of you who were here last week, uh, some of you anyway, may have noticed that there was a DVD on the windshield of your car. Now, I, don't, I understand not everybody got it, but some did. Now, I'm not sure if any of you took uh, some time to take a look at this DVD. Now, right off the bat, I will tell you then when somebody goes out of their way and not tell the pastor or the leaders of the church to do that, that raises a red flag right there. Amen. Now, it is my job to take a look at these things, and, I, and so I did. Now, I'm not going to go into many details, but uh, unfortunately, there are many factions springing up in the Adventist church that, in my opinion, Satan is using to confuse and distract us. And one of those factions lately is... Uh, has a lot to do with uh, works, uh, works-related salvation, a state of sinlessness that looks upon ourselves and, and doesn't focus on Jesus. And friends, we, we already know the issue of righteousness by faith. We are to look at Christ, not on ourselves. Amen. Now, if you have questions about this, you know, I, 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 I preached a sermon on July 13th. You're welcome to go on the website and look at it. The theory of representation actually addressed this very issue of us looking at Christ because it is only through Christ that we are declared righteous. It has nothing to do with anything that we do. If we're looking at ourselves, you're going to be sorely disappointed. If you have any other questions about this, you can see me at the end. That's all I had to say about that. Let's have prayer. Father God, we're seeking a word from you this morning. We pray that you will speak to us and through your spirit convict us of following your ways. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of you uh, may be familiar with um, uh, the comedian Jeff Foxworthy. Any of you are, are familiar with him? He's a Christian man. He, he, uh, his comedy routines are pretty safe. Uh, and, um, and so he has been known, if, if, if some of you are familiar with him, uh, he's known, one of his com comedy routines is, if you, do, if you do this, that, and the other, you might be a redneck. So you might be familiar with this. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, you know, and so I, in doing my research for this sermon, I ran into uh, something similar regarding Seventh-day Adventists. And, and about the point uh, of the message that, that I want to bring to you today. So if you indulge me. I'd like to share with this with you this morning. You might be a Seventh-day Adventist if. This is what well, this is titled. If you know how to play, po uh, play poker with Bible answer cards and wheat thins, you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> if you have all the Egypt to Canaan answers memorized, you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. If you still feel guilty because you shower on the Sabbath, you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. If you find yourself telling your kids on Sabbath, you can wade but you can't swim, then you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. 
If you find yourself counting down the seconds before sunset on Sabbath evening, you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. If you can turn any sport into a Sabbath sport, for example, if you want to play basketball, whoever gets a basket has to quote a Bible verse, (laughs) then you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. If you go to the restaurant on Friday to pay for your Sabbath meal, then you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. If you go out to lunch after church and put it on your credit card so you really are not paying on the Sabbath, you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. And finally, if you ever wonder if taping a game on Sabbath and watching it later constitutes a sin, then you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. You could probably think of a lot more, right? Now, now all these are pretty comical, but I wonder if you could relate to some of them, if they ring a bell to you. You know, when, when it comes to the Sabbath, uh, understanding that it's on the seventh day of the week, we have no problems with that. It's, uh, the Bible is clear on this subject, both Old and New Testament. It is the seventh day of the week. So the, 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 which day is the Sabbath is never an issue, but I think a lot of us struggle with what is appropriate to do on the Sabbath and what is not appropriate to do on the Sabbath. And you know, i got to be honest with you, when I, when I first became an Adventist, you know, some a little over 30 years ago, you know, I'm growing, and this, you know, you, you know, this may be true to some of you who are new Adventists, uh, I, I struggled with that, and, and i got to be honest, I, I, I was kind of uh, legalistic on the issue because I, I just didn't know. And, of course, with the passage of time, you grow and you learn. But I'll be honest, you know, over the years in the church and and since I've been in ministry, I have heard uh, about some of the things that some of the saints are doing on the Sabbath, and it makes me a bit uncomfortable. And yet, I acknowledge that even though it makes me feel uncomfortable, it may not make you feel uncomfortable. And so I guess the question is that we seek to answer today is, how should we observe the Sabbath? How should we keep the Sabbath holy? So let's open our Bibles to Isaiah 58. By the way, you have a study guide in your, in your Bibles, or rather in your, in your um, bulletin, so you can complete those, and the children will get their treat. Miss Lucy has the treat bag. Where is Miss Lucy anyway? There she is. For those who've completed, and, and again, for those who've completed the study guide. Some guys show up, here it is. Well, you didn't complete it, but can I get one, you know? (laughs) Isaiah 58. Now, just a little background. Isaiah lived in a troubled world. He, uh, 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 the kingdom of Judah, the kingdom of Israel were in an era of peril and crisis. The people of God were were actually deep in the ways of sin. However, uh, under under King Azariah in Judah and Jeroboam II in, in Israel, They actually were prospering. They were strong and prosperous. And as you know, sometimes when we get prosperous, sometimes we forget where the prosperity comes from. And and, and so we turn our backs on God. And this is exactly what was happening to both Judah and and Israel. Prosperity, they were deeply into the ways of sin. They forsook God. In fact, the whole chapter, chapter 58 focuses on this issue of the delusion and hypocrisy of Israel, thinking that they were pleasing God because simply they were going through the motions. Going through the motions. If I do this, if I do that, that God should be okay. And they forgot that God was an intimate relationship with us. So they forgot about that. It was all about what they did for God. And notice if you go to verse 3, They say, why have we fasted, they ask, or they say, and you have not seen. Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? Why are we doing this for God? Why are we going to church? Why are we giving our offerings? Why are we doing outreach? Why are we going to prayer meeting if God doesn't notice? See, it, it, it became about them and not about God. It became about them because they thought they were pleasing God by the, way, the things that they were doing. And I wonder if that can happen to us too. If we go through the motions and we think that we're pleasing God simply because we're doing the check. Well, all right, well, I did this, 
check, I did this, check, and we forget that God wants more than just rules and regulations. It's about a relationship. So this is what they were, that was going on there in, in, in the, with the children of Judah and Israel. And, and God nipped this on the bud by telling them the kind of fast. Because notice they focus on this issue. Why have we fasted? So God tells them what kind of fast he requires. Again, it's not about rules and regulations, but about true and practical religion. True and practical religion. See, God was seeking to bless his people. God has always wanted to bless his people. And, and, and so he, he, he's seeking this work of revival and reformation among his people so that he could bless them. Amen. And so notice, he, if, if you go to verse 11, it says, The Lord will, con- will guide you continually and satisfy your soul and drought, and it goes on. In other words, when this, when this work of revival, when this work of reformation happens, these will be the results. Amen. You will be blessed. And notice, continuing in verse 12, Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. This is a prophecy, really, because God God is telling them, listen, when you go back, as you know, the the Jews were going to be taken in exile, right? Of course, uh, the the Israelites were... Uh, Israel was destroyed by the Assyrians, but the Ju- Judah was taken by Babylon. But we've been studying this in our Sabbath school, the Nehemiah and Ezra, they were to come back and they were going to be building everything up, Amen. right? The problem was that it, it wasn't only their physical structures that were destroyed, their moral edifice was destroyed too. And they had to rebuild that too. God was interested in rebuilding that. This is why this work of reformation is important. But now, I, I am not a builder. I wish I was. But I know enough to know that if you are going to build something or if you're going to restore a structure, you have to start with a foundation. Because if you don't start with a foundation, it's going to crumble. Some of you know that we uh, at the Mercado Residence dealt with this foundation problem recently, right? We had to fix it because otherwise the house was going to fall on one side. Fundamentals are very important. If this work of reformation is going to start, it starts with religion 101, the fundamentals, which God mentions in verses 6 and 7. He says, is this not the fast that I've chosen to loosen the bonds of wickedness? And he goes on. Practical religion. Practical religion. And, And when they do that, if you go back to verse 12, he says, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach. Now, what is a breach? What is a breach? I'm sorry? A void, yeah. A rupture, a gap, a hole, if you will. Something that is broken. But it it can also mean an infarction or or a violation of the law. And I think this is where God is focusing on. There is a hole on the the wall, as it were. This is why, you know, this word in Hebrew for repair means to hedge up, you know? A breach has been made in the wall because of their failure to practice practical religion. But the foundations were there. The foundations were there, and a new structure was to be rebuilt. And God ta- talks about this in verses 6 through 10. Uh, uh, but notice it says, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. The, the restorer, if you, if you look at the word, it's to, it says to return back. God is seeking for them to go back to the path that they should have been walking in the first place. Yeah. But now I want you to notice, this is where we're focusing on this morning. I want you to notice where this work of reformation was to begin. And it was, it, this work of reformation and revival needs to start with the fundamentals. Notice where it starts, the fundamentals. Verse 13. If You turn away your foot from the Sabbath. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath. So so notice that they, back in in, in Isaiah's day, they were going through some of the same problems that we go through today. Again, the issue was never which day is the Sabbath, because in the Old and the New Testament, it's always the seventh day. That's not an issue. But the issue was how do we keep the Sabbath holy. How do we observe the Sabbath? And, and this was their own the problem too. How to observe it? 
And notice it starts if, if you turn away your foot from the south. So if, obviously, that's a conditional word. So if you turn your foot away from the Sabbath, things will happen. This work of reformation will take place. If you don't, then you still have that hole in the wall that needs to be repaired. But now, what does it mean to turn your foot away from the Sabbath? When you, when you look in the Bible, this illustration of walking, your feet, it talks about the way we live our lives, Amen. right? So clearly, th there was a problem there in, in, in Isaiah's day that God's people were doing their own thing on the Sabbath day. They were walking where they, where they wanted to go. They, they were doing what it pleased them. Obviously, that's an issue. Now, again, you know, these are things that we, we, we need to apply to ourselves. Could it be that perhaps some of us, Seventh-day Adventists, are doing our own thing on the Sabbath day, going where we want to go, doing the things that we want to do on the Sabbath day? He, he goes on to say that... Um, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day. So notice, if you turn your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day. So clearly, they were doing the things that were pleasing to them on the Sabbath. And notice, he juxtaposes the, the word your and my, right? So if you turn your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day. Hmm? You know, sometimes, over the years, as you know, you, you probably know, I, I, I help a lot of people who are having issues with Sabbath employment. So we have this letter that we can give them. And the way the letter is written, you know, just to make it sound nice, it says something along the lines that, the, that Saturday is his or her Sabbath. But you know what, friends? The Sabbath is not our Sabbath. Amen. It says the Sabbath is, he says, my holy day. The Sabbath isn't about you. Now, now, let me qualify that. Because the Sabbath was created for a benefit. Mark 2, 27, the Sabbath was made for man, for humanity, for our benefit. But it isn't about us. It is the Lord's day. You know that, you know, sometimes people that read Revelation chapter 1, it says John uh, was in, the, in spirit in the Lord's day. And some people have thought about, well, that must be Sunday. But, but the Bible tells us clearly that Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is the Lord's day. It is his day, not mine. Amen. It is his Sabbath, not my Sabbath. Amen. And so, so, so what God is saying here through Isaiah, through his people, and to us today is to stop Doing what you think it's appropriate on my holy day. Stop going where you think you need to go because it's my holy day. See, the essence of sin is selfishness. Is doing things the way they benefit us, you know, irrespective of God and respective of how our actions affect others. And so the Sabbath, friends, provides us with an opportunity to subdue selfishness and cultivate habits that will please God and be helpful to our fellow human beings. But think about this, subdue selfishness. I've told you that, that I was working 72-hour work weeks. And the reason, because I wanted to make the buck. It's all about making money. And I can guarantee you, friends, if I wasn't a Sabbath keeper, I'd be working on Sabbath too. And I know some of you right now would probably say the same thing. If it wasn't for the Sabbath, I'd be making money right now. Yeah, because it's all about us. It's all about what we can get, what we can purchase. I want to give my kids the best. I want to give this car, and I want to get that, and I want to work hard. Listen, I know it. You know, I talk to my brother all the time. That's his, that's his problem. He works every day. And who wants to live like that? But people do. People do because it's all about making money, about selfishness, friends. And so we need to do things that will please God and contribute to the well-being of others on the Sabbath day. See, proper Sabbath observance will lead to this work of reformation and revival that God wants to accomplish. Ellen White said that a revival of true godliness is our greatest and most urgent of our needs. 
And so notice, if that work is to be done, it starts with fundamentals. And friends, I am willing to, for lack of a better word, I'm willing to bet that if this was an issue back in Israel's day, I'm willing to bet it is an issue today as well. I'm willing to bet. So notice, he says, and call the Sabbath a delight. The holy day of the Lord honorable. See, we won't reap the benefits of the Sabbath if we think the Sabbath is a burden, if the Sabbath has become a burden for us. You know that the Jews, in, 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 in Jesus' time, they were, were told that they had over 600 rules about the Sabbath. Imagine that. It was all about don't do. And, you know, of course, Jesus comes, this is how our, our, our evangelical Christians first misinterpret that. Jesus comes not because he was working on the Sabbath, but he's, he came to do a Sabbath reformation because they had lost sight of the blessing of the Sabbath. Amen. They had some silly rules. I mean, if you look at this, I mean, there was, uh, for example, you weren't allowed to spit on the ground on the Sabbath because the saliva could hit a, a blade of grass, the humidity, and that would help the grass grow. That was considered harvesting, and you would be working on the Sabbath. Uh, I mean, come on. They wouldn't carry a handkerchief on their hand because that was a, a, a work, so they would pin it to their robe. So if they had to clean their nose, they'd go like this. Isn't that something? I mean, silly stuff. And yet, you know, how easy it is for us to maybe pinpoint at them. And I wonder, could it be that we uh, also have loaded the Sabbath with a lot of things that are unnecessary, a lot of the I can'ts. You know, the Sabbath for a lot of us have become the day of the I can'ts. Hmm? I can't work on the Sabbath. I can't go to a restaurant on the Sabbath. I can't do this and I can do that. Now, you know, the Bible has certain guidelines, but see... Really, it's a matter of the way you look at things. If the Sabbath is the day of the I can't, it is no wonder it's become a burden for some people. It is no wonder when, when, when it's almost sunset, you're looking at the clock, so as soon as sunset hit, you turn on the TV and you go back to your life. No wonder. Because we've become, it's become a day of burden. It's a day of limitations. See, it, it, instead of the Sabbath being the day of the I can't, it should be the day of the I can it should be the day that I get to. It's not that I can't work on the Sabbath. It's that I get to be off on the Sabbath. I don't have to work on the Sabbath. You see, when you look at it from a different perspective, it becomes the blessing that God wants it to become. But, you know, we've grown up, uh, uh, and maybe those of us who have been Adventists for long, we, we've grown up and, 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 and spend that uh, time as Adventists with thinking uh, about the I can't. We've communicated to our kids, and sometimes we wonder why the, our kids are all mad on the Sabbath and they're waiting for sunsets to, to go back to their lives. Because we've made that happen. God says, call the Sabbath a delight. In the Hebrew, this word delight means something pleasurable and luxurious. Huh? Something pleasurable and luxurious. That's what the Sabbath is. When, when there's something pleasurable and luxurious, uh, 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 don't you look forward to something like that? See, see, God wants us to look forward to the Sabbath. Some people don't look forward to the Sabbath because, again, well, here we go. I can't do this. I can't do that. And so we, because we're focusing on the negative instead of focusing on the positive. And, and you know, the fact of the matter is God wants to have communion with us. Isn't that something? The Sabbath is the day that God has set aside because I don't know why he wants to spend time with me. Isn't that something? The creator of heaven and earth has made a date with me, and that date is every week. See, we, we, we focus so many on things on the check mark, on the rule and regulations, we're forgetting that this is about relationship. All this is about a relationship God wants to have with you. Amen. And, we, and we forget about that, friends, and we miss out. We miss out on that, on the relationship, spending time looking for. Because I'll tell you what, we're so stressed out in our world these days. Again, we would be working every day if it wasn't for the Sabbath. 
So God knew that ahead of time. He said, you know, I, I, I want to give these people a gift, my creation a gift. And he did it from day one, right there in, in the week of creation. Looking ahead, knowing that we would need this. And by the way, you know, we are so busy. You know, this is, this is the, 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 that's the word I'm trying to look for here. You know, we in America have been fed some really fake news. Uh, you know, a, a lot of us come from different countries here to America because we're seeking the American dream, you know. And when we come to get to here to get the American dream, we, we realize that we've been lied to. Because if you want the quote-unquote American dream, you have to, you have to work hard. You, and and, and, and you've got to work every day. And, and if you don't work every day, you're not going to be able to accomplish it. Amen. And so we become stressed out. This is not what it's about. And because we're so busy, you know, one of the things we miss out on, and I mentioned some of this in, in, when I talked about the, the little series we had on parenting, the fact that we need to dedicate time to our family. They are, you know, because we, we work so hard, we're so busy, some families, the members of the families don't even see each other during the week. Oh, you know, the, the, the dad works during the day, mom works at night, the kids are in school in extracurricular activities, Sunday through Friday, you don't, you don't see them. And so God, knowing that, you know, he set a day aside not only to spend time with him, but to spend time with our family. And, and so he, he set it up in such a way that we, can, that we ought to be looking forward to it. Right? I remember when, uh, uh, when Jean-Luc, our son, was a little boy. He was two or three. It was just back in 1996. I was going through paramedic school in 1996, and at the same time I was working full time. And so... Um, I would, I, my shift was 7 to 3, and then I, were, I would go to school from 6 to 10. That was Monday through Thursday. This was at least 16 hours of classwork plus all the studying besides work. And so I would leave the house around 6.15 or so so I can get to work, get off at 3. But since my, the, the school was right by the, the, the place I worked at, the IRS, I used to work at the IRS at the time, it was right there, so I didn't go home. I stayed around. I would eat, maybe exercise a little bit and, and, and study, and then go to school. So when I left in the morning, Jean-Luc was still sleeping. When I came back to, at night, he was already asleep. So I spent no time. But uh, uh, the, uh, the Friday, because I didn't go to school on Friday, I would get off at 3. And again, I'm looking forward to this already. I would get off at 3, and I would go home. But I would pick up Jean-Luc from the babysitter, which was you know, a neighbor of ours, and we would prepare for the Sabbath. But I remember that it's something that I look forward to because on the Sabbath, Friday night, you know, after, after sunset, Jean-Luc would get all his toys and put them all on the floor. And I would sit down with him. He had these big Legos and all kinds of stuff. And we would spend hours playing. We would wrestle together. I mean, this was a great time. And I looked forward to that. Friday was the day that Lucy and I would, would lay in our bed and, and talk Friday night. Something to look forward to. God wants the Sabbath, the Sabbath to be something that you look forward to. Every week he provides us with that blessing. Time with our family. Maybe, maybe you don't see during a week, but above all, time with him. Amen. Time with him. This is what the Sabbath is about, friends. And he goes on to say, and shall honor him. So, and you call the Sabbath of delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him. Notice that we are not honoring the day. We are honoring the God of the day. Amen. And you say, well, how shall we honor him? Well, he goes on to say, we honor him by not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. So when we do it God's way, then we are honoring him. When we're doing it our way, uh, you know, going our own places, you know, doing our, following our own pleasure, speaking our own words, etc., we're dishonoring him. We're dishonoring him. This is the problem that they had back then, and certainly it, it seems to be the problem that many have today. Now, I, I used to have a, 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 I guess I didn't understand this concept of calling the Sabbath a delight and at the same time not being able to do the things that I like to do. But what I found is that, you know, God has given us six days of the week to do everything we got to do. Now, what we do during the week is not necessarily bad things. Where you wish just you know, working, making a living, shopping, all those things, they're not a bad thing. They may not be spiritual, but they're not bad things. But think about it. When you're doing the week, you know, all these things that we do, you know, have us focus on them. A lot of times, God's not in a mix here. 
See, see, what God wants is that on his day, you're doing things that involve him. Amen. That keep your mind focused on him and not on everything else that you got to do. Right. See, this is why, I mean, again, the, 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 God is not interested in a list of do's and don'ts. He does provide principles in, in Scripture. And, and so you, you apply those principles. And this is why, for example, if you were to go to, to the Mercado residence, you won't find a TV on on Sabbath, unless I'm watching 3ABN or a sermon. But you won't, watch, you, you won't see that. You won't you know, listen to any secular music on the Sabbath, uh, uh, watching the news, all those things that, that keep our mind focused on, on secular matters and not on God. And see, this is what God is interested in. This is what God is interested in. And so, you know, if you were to wonder, if this is an issue for you, if this has been a problem for you, well, how, 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 how do I keep the Sabbath holy? The, the greatest example we have is Jesus. I mean, how did Jesus keep the Sabbath? Think about it. What did he do on the Sabbath that is an example for us? Well, we're told that he worshipped on, uh, on the Sabbath, didn't he? Luke 4, 16, it tells us that as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on Sabbath. So that's the first thing. Because remember, it's not about us, it's about him. So the first thing, obviously, is that we should be worshiping God with other believers on the Sabbath. Amen. And if what we're doing or not doing is keeping us away from doing that, then maybe you should reevaluate what you're doing. Now, you know, once in a while, you maybe visit another church, or maybe you, it's, it's, if, it's the, if it's summer and the weather's nice, you, you may want to go out and, you know, worship God in nature and that kind of thing. You do that once in a while. But friends, if it, this is, becomes a habit and you're not in church, that's something you need to reevaluate. Because Jesus was his custom, and it ought to be our custom as well. Huh? Ought to be our custom as well. Um, he, he, he did acts of kindness on the Sabbath. He ministered to people's needs. He studied God's word, shared it fellowshiped. And so if, if what we're doing is taken away from us following that example, then perhaps we need to reevaluate how we feel about the Sabbath. Are we following our own pleasure? So a good question to ask is, is this event, this activity that I'm doing, is this helping, helping me get closer to God or is it taking me farther away from him? Is this what, is what I'm doing honoring God? This is the acid test about how we keep the Sabbath holy, about what we find, if it's appropriate or not. That's the acid test, friends. But again, sometimes we just focus on the little details, on, on you know, checking each box that we forget about the whole thing, about relationship. You know, I, I, you know as you can imagine, you hear stories over the years and, and ministry, you know. But, you know, sometimes we, we, we get confused. I've had, you know, conversations with church members. You know, sometimes um, not, not all our, our children, unfortunately, go to Adventist schools. It'd be nice if everybody did win, but not everybody does. And so, you know, sometimes you got to put our kids in public school. That's just a, a reality, right? And, 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 you know, some of these public schools have a lot of activities, but a lot of these activities are on Saturday. And I, and I found, you know, I've, I've, I've had church members that, you know, they want to be supportive to, with their kids. And so, oh, you know, we, don't, we, don't, we want our kids to play sports and everything and being involved. And so I want to support my kids. And so if the game is on Sabbath, I'm going to be there on the Sabbath to support my kid. And, I, and I've been told, well, you know, I'll, we'll, we have a devotional before the game, so it's okay. And it's not okay, friends, because it's not... It, it, the issue of where we are on the Sabbath day is important. Amen. You know, we ought to be in the presence of God, doing the things that involve Him. You know, we, we, we forget about these things. You know, years ago, um, when we were in Philadelphia, we were members of a Hispanic church. And um, a lot of the members of the Hispanic church were uh, employees. They worked for this place called Cardone Industries. They, this was a, they remanufactured car parts. And so a lot of them worked there. And Cardone Industries, they were very family-oriented, a very good company. And every year during the summer, they did something for the family. So I, was, I thought it was great. And what they did was they rented a theme park that was close by. And so on that day, that theme park was closed to the general public. It was only open for employees of Cardone. And so the way they did it is that if you were an employee of Cardone, you didn't have to pay for anything. You can just, you'll just show up. You're going to have to pay for your entrance or for rides, for food. Everything was covered. I was, that's great. 
But of course, it was on Saturday. And on that day, you know that there were a lot of our members that were going to that, and, and, and their justification, well, we're not paying for anything, so it's okay. We're missing the point, friends. We're missing the point. This is about relationship, friends. It's about relationship. So when you call the Sabbath of the light and shall honor him, not doing your own thing, he goes on to say, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. Do you want to delight yourself in the Lord on the Sabbath? Well, it is only by doing it his way. If we do it our way, you're not going to delight yourself in the Lord because you're missing out. Now, again, for some of us, we, 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 we miss the picture, uh, 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 and we don't, we don't understand, well, what, why can't I do this on the Sabbath? Why can't I do that on the Sabbath? Well, you know, just a story. I may have told some of you this story, so I'm going to tell it again because it makes a point. Back in 2015, my wife and I turned, it was tw- our 25th wedding anniversary. So, you know, we, you know, we decided, well, what are we going to do for our 25th wedding anniversary? So we decided we're going to Disney World. And so that's what we did. We went to Disney World. You know, we had gone to Disney World years before with our kids. The kids were small. And any of you have been to Disney World with little kids, you know how stressful that can be. So we decided, we're, you know, if we, if it's just ourselves, you know, as a couple, we'll have a good time. And we did have a good time. We did have a good time. But anyway, you know, it, 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 was, our, it was in February. Our, our, our anniversary is on February 11th. So we went Sunday through Friday that week. So we got there on Sunday the 9th, and, and we stayed there that week. So Sunday the 9th, and then uh, our anniversary is on Tuesday the 11th. Well, on Monday of that week, you know, we were in the park. I, I think Lucy went to the bathroom or something. And, you know, it happens that, by coincidence, you, you see people there that you know. It's a small world. And so I'm, I'm, I'm standing there waiting for Lucy, and all of a sudden I see this young lady. Well, you know, she's... About my age, so I guess she's young, right? Because she's about my age. <laughs> so there's a young lady who happened to be my old girlfriend in high school, Uh-oh. and I see her there. So, you know, hey, how you doing? So we, you know, we got to talking, but I mean, she was in a hurry, so it's not like we could talk a lot. So, you know, we, really, we wanted to catch up with each other, and so, you know, me not thinking... I decided, well, why don't you come to dinner tomorrow, tomorrow with us? Because we, 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 what we did was we had this package that we, we purchased where, you know, you buy, you, you, you can go to certain restaurants. So every day, you know, every, or every night, we were going to this one of these fancy restaurants in, in, in Disney. It was part of the package that we bought. So we know where we were going to eat each, each day and, you know, what time we had to be there. So I say, well, you know, why don't you come to dinner with my wife and I tomorrow? Now, this is Monday, right? So Monday's the 10th, the 11th is our anniversary, right? So, so there we are on Tuesday the 11th, and we are in this restaurant, and Lucy and I are talking and having a good time, and then there comes my friend to our dinner, our anniversary dinner. Now, uh, you know, if, if, you are, if you are in Lucy's shoes, ladies, how, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> now, gentlemen, 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 come on. So if you're a guy, you know that I, you know, I am a, you know, I'm not in Lucy's graces, right? Now, th- th- do you really think that I was delighting myself in that meal right there and that? No, oh, because, now, 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 wh- why was Lucy mad? See, see, see uh, come on, see, Mary got it. See, she was mad because I had no right to bring my old girlfriend to my day with, with my wife, because it was our day, right, our anniversary. I had no right to do that. But now, you know, it, it, it's easy for us to see why I was so insensitive, right? 
But don't we do that to God all the time? Amen. See, this is the issue here, friends. Amen. When we are doing all these other things, thinking about work or TV or sports or the ball game, whatever the case may be, we're bringing our girlfriend and our boyfriend to our time with God. And, and no wonder we're not going to enjoy our time with God because our old girlfriend and boyfriend are there. This is the point, friends. God wants to spend that time with me because it's our day. He set that day aside to spend time with me, and I'm just bringing everything else and piling it up. And so my attention is focused on my girlfriend and my boyfriend, whatever the case may be, and I'm not enjoying that time with God. Huh? That's the point. Now... I have a confession to make. This story that I just told you is not true. I am not that insensitive. I mean, come on, it's common sense. But, but I tell it because it highlights that important fact, because that's what we do with God. We, we bring everything else to our time with God, and we don't enjoy it. And, do, and so the day doesn't become a blessing for us. Huh? When we decide to do it God's way, to spend time with him and focus on him, then we enjoy our time together. Then the Sabbath becomes a blessing and the delight that he wants it to be. Amen. That's just the way it is. So when we do it his way, notice what he says. And I will cause you to ride on the hills of the earth. Now, this is, this, this is a metaphor here. A metaphor that speaks of victory, it speaks of security. You know, in those days, the cities were built on hills because of the natural defensibility. The armies chose uh, strategic points in the hills because of defensibility, too, for control. So notice, what God is saying here is that when you do it my way, I'm going to protect you. I am going to carry you. I'm going to make sure that you're okay. And this is important because you know why? Because many of us, or many of you, are right now struggling with these issues on the Sabbath. Many of you may be right now struggling with, you know, that, you know the fact that your boss is telling you you got to work on the Sabbath. And then, you know, you don't know what to do because, you know, you have a family support. You have things, you have bills to pay. And what if I lose my job on the Sabbath? Well, that's, that's the point, Sherry. God is saying, listen, when you do it my way, I'm going to take care of you. Amen. But, you know, we have to take a stand for God. Right. Huh? Right. You, know, uh, um, you know, again, we still live in a country that we have certain rights. Now, now that may not be forever. We may lose them soon enough. But we still have a country, we're living in a country that, that we have certain rights. And if you didn't know this, you have the right to worship on the, on the day that you, that you see fit, based on, on, your, on your faith. You have that right. It's in the law. And you don't have to be, even be a citizen of this country for that law to apply to you. Amen. Some of you may remember back in, I think it was January, when we had uh, Renee uh, brought her friend. He, she was a, a judge, uh, talked about, uh, you know, uh, religious freedom. And she addressed some of those things. So there's things to do. People ask me for those Sabbath letters. If you're having an issue with Sabbath, I have a letter that I give you. Nine times out of ten, that letter's sufficient. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes you may have to, you know, go to Human Resources yourself. Or maybe you need to contact the Equal em uh, uh, Employment Opportunity Commission so that you can get things taken care of. And most of the time, this, is, this will take care of it. But, you know, one of the things that I tell people is this. Listen, this is a reality. You can take the steps necessary to get the Sabbath off. If, if you have to file a complaint, you just file a complaint. But know this, that sometimes employers get mad when you file a complaint. Now, they may give you the Sabbath off and everything, but if they're mad at you, they'll find a, a, a reason to fire you. And so this is the issue. Where do you stand? Because a lot, of, a, a lot of times people just compromise. Well, if I can't work on the Sabbath, if I can't take off on the Sabbath, I have a family to support, I guess I'll have to work. Friends, you need to take a stand. And God says when you take a stand, he'll take care of you. Amen. See, when we, when we look at this issue, you know, a, a lot of times our jobs, we, we want these jobs to be doors that God opens for us. Right? But 
keep, them, keep in mind that just because a door is open, it doesn't mean that God opened it. Amen. See, when a door opens, you should be able to walk through that door with your faith with you. Amen. And if you can't go through that door with your faith, then you can guarantee God didn't open that door. Amen. Because if God opened that door, you're going to be able to do it. And if you were in somewhere where you can't practice your faith, then God doesn't want you to be there. And if God doesn't want you to be there, why would you? Amen. Why would you want to be where God doesn't want you to be? Amen. You need to take a stand. And by the way, many of us, as a side note, many of us need to learn to take a stand. And it may not be about the Sabbath. But many of us need to learn to take a stand for God. Many of us may be dealing with issues in our lives that we have to, we're in a balancing act. Do I do what God wants me to do or do I do what, well, ultimately you know who's in charge of the other side, right? And, and we know what God requires, but we're still in the balancing act and we're not taking a stand for God. It may be anything. It may be a relationship that you're in right now. And you know that God does not approve that relationship. You need to take a stand for God because if, if that relationship is going to cost you your eternal life, that's not where God wants you to be. If that's, that's not where God wants you to be, why would you want to be in a relationship like that? You need to take a stand. But God is saying, listen, I'll keep you. I'll protect you. And notice he continues saying, and I'll feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, what is the heritage of Jacob? I, I looked this up to see what, what this was. And there are seven things that God promises people. He promised holiness of character. Number two, he promised the blessings of health. Number three, superior intellect. Number four, skill in agriculture and animal husbandry. Now, that may not be many, nothing to us because we're not farmers. They were, they were farmers back in those days. But in, in our case, he's basically telling us he's going to give you the skill for you to do what you're supposed to do. Number five, superior craftsmanship. Number six, unparalleled prosperity. And number seven, national greatness. And God says, I will give all of this to you. I will give you everything you need and maybe some of the things that you want. And we can believe it. You know why we can believe it? Because he says... The mouth of the Lord has spoken, period. We can believe it. So God is seeking a work of revival and information. As he did back in Israel's time, he's seeking it in ours. There is a hole in the wall, and he wants it repaired. That work of reformation will repair the wall, but it must start with the fundamentals. How are you keeping the Sabbath, friends? How are you observing the Sabbath? Maybe perhaps... You need to reevaluate how you feel about the Sabbath, the things that you're doing, or the things that you're not doing. May it be said of us, you know, again, and back to, you know, you might be a Seventh-day Adventist if. May it be said of us that if you delight on the Sabbath day in communion with God and worshiping and serving, uh, serving and resting and fellowshipping and spending time with your family, you might be a Seventh-day Adventist. May that be said about us. Amen, friends? Amen. Let's all stand as we sing our closing hymn. Number 320. Lord of creation. Number 
Let us pray. Loving Father, thank you today for so many things that you do for us. We thank you for the gift of the Sabbath, a gift that you established back there that week of creation, knowing that we would need that day of rest, that we would need that day that we could leave the stresses of the world behind and focus on the gifts that you have given us through our family and focus on on the gift of having a God so awesome as you that you would want to spend time with us. Lord, may we take advantage of this. May we be blessed as you want to on this holy day. May it not be just about a list of requirements, but about that relationship that you want to have with us. May this guide our Sabbath keeping from here on. Thank you, Lord, for the spiritual food, and we also thank you for the physical one you've provided. May you bless it. May you provide for each of your children as you've provided for us. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' powerful and precious name. Amen.